I'm in Rod Tip family. Likewise to you, brother. Thank you, Johnson. Yeah.
Ashe, thank you so much, Papa Ashe. Jeff. That was beautiful. I love that. I love that being brought this week. Um, greetings to everyone. And Amin Rahit Tep, peace and blessings to everyone under the sound of my voice, everyone who is watching this in the future on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much to all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Wose Community Church, and we hope that you guys are here and comfortable and have all your vibes in front of you, whether it's just, you know, that that peaceful spirit that we got from the from the meditation this morning from Sister Debbie. I I just, you know, I have found recently that I really enjoy, you know, a really good silent meditation. It's very beautiful and I love it. And um, and so um, I'm just praying that all of you guys are are nice and peaceful, and we're we're working in unity today in the beautifulness of of Amun Ra. Um, so here at Wose, what we believe is that Wose a community church is a community of the way. The way is my art, truth, justice, and righteousness. We believe the teachings of our elders and our ancestors that the creator God created the universe and all life and has a place in each of us, a part of the divine spirit. God living in us and through us has given us the right and the power to establish peace and justice in all human life and true harmony with all of creation. We believe in the living faith of our ancestors. Our way is not merely ritual or belief. Our way is a way of life. Our way is not a random path. Our way begins with coherent understanding. It is a way that aims at preserving knowledge of who we are. It is with this conviction that we study the rich heritage of our African people. The way is reciprocity. The way is wholeness. The way is unity and self-determination. It is creativity and collective work and responsibility. Our way is faith purpose and cooperative economics. Our way knows no oppression. Our way creates. Our way worships and praises the God of our ancestors. The way is life. The way only destroys destruction. And I want to read, I want to read um, from the Husia at this moment in from the book of Coming Forth by Day, number four, where it says, Behold, I am in your presence, O Lord of heaven. There is no evil in my body. I have not knowingly spoken that which is not true, nor have I done anything with a false heart. Grant that I may be like those favored ones who are in your following, and that I may be an Asar, one vindicated and risen, and greatly favored by the beneficent God. Ashe. So to, to all of you out there, welcome. As I said before, welcome, welcome. Now we're going to um, have our affirmations from Mama and Gina and Minister Mali. And after we hear from them, we will be hearing from the beautiful song stylings of Baba, da Baba Damu. So first up is Mama and Gina and Minister Mali with the affirmations. And good morning, good morning all. <clears throat> This is Mom and Gina and absolutely wonderful service thus far. Our affirmation is something just reminds us of who and whose we are. And we like to reaffirm that each Sunday. It is on the screen for you now. And I will start. We will know God's truth to be free and self-determined. Creator. Help us to remember the humanity, glory, and suffering of our ancestors and to honor the struggles of our elders. Let us strive to bring new vision and life to our people. Let there be peace and harmony and love among us. Let us be loving, sharing, and creative. Let us work study and listen so we may learn, teach, and cultivate self-reliance. Grant us power, O Holy One, as we struggle to resurrect 
our hearts and our homeland. We will raise our children according to the needs of our nation with discipline, patience, devotion, and courage. We will strive to be the living models of the new direction of our people. For we are an African people. We are children of God. Ashe. 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 Thank you. Ashe. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister Alicia. Good morning, uh, Wose, Ankh, Ujjah, Seneb. It's always such a great blessing to be in the company of all these beautiful souls as we commune and call upon our Supreme God. Um, this service has been so inspirational. Uh, every service yes, I just wanted to just wanted to say that. Thank everyone for all your beautiful spirits. Thank you for Wose. Yes. So I, I will try to keep that spirit going and play a song that is very um, inspiring to me uh, when I play it, when I hear other people play it by the beautiful brother, uh, Pharaoh Sanders. The creator has a master plan because uh, I can see the master plan happening and I can see Wose being a, a part of it, not the biggest part of that master plan. That's what I can see. Um, for Wose and for humanity. So this is my song for Wose. Um, the creator has a master plan. <laughs> i 
Beautiful, beautiful. As always, so yeah. excellent and beautiful, Baba Damu. Thank you. Thank you, Baba Damu. Asante Sana. And thank you also to Mama Angina and Minister Mali for uh, reciting our affirmations for today. Um, now we're going to move on to a, another beautiful part in the service which is uh, Baba Tai is gonna come with the historical tribute. And then after the voice of uh, Baba Tai with the historical tribute, there's gonna be a song, a video um, that Mama Gloria has sent in, which we always love. So first up is the historical tribute by Baba Tai. Baba Tai, take it away. Uh, I am, this has been a beautiful service thus far. Thank you, Mama Minister Alicia. Um, I'm so full already. And um, Baba Daimu, know that it is always an honor and a challenge to follow you. <laughs> okay. So we've come to that time in our service that we call our historical tribute. Uh, it's a time that we take out each and every Sunday to pay honor, to pay homage, to pay tribute to some significant, not necessarily famous, but some significant person, place, or event, or organization in our history. And we do it because we know that if we don't take the time to remember what we have done and to teach it, especially to our youth, that it will be forgotten. Um, it seems that I haven't done a tribute in a long time. And it's because you, many of you have stepped up and have given us beautiful tributes throughout the year. And I thank you and will say thank you for that. And let me just let you know that any of you out there who, who have a burning desire to do a tribute, just let me know and we can get you on the schedule. Okay, so now here we go. Um, I just want to make sure that, hold on. Now I'm having the uh, Malik problem. Everything works until it's time to put it on and then it doesn't work. Oh, let's, let's try this again. Why is that not doing it? Hold on, we'll say please. Okay, I assume everybody sees that? 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, you good. Good. Okay, so um, I want to start this more. I have to do one, one more thing here. Sorry. I have something in the middle of my screen that I want to try to get rid of so I can see what's going on. I want to start this morning by acknowledging this brother. <laughs> he is, of course, our always eloquent, always studious uh, minister in training, Malik, right? Um, and I sat with Malik because a few weeks ago, Malik gave us a historical tribute on this brother. And he told us that uh, Colin Kaepernick stood up for all of us by kneeling for the national anthem. And um, we do, one of the reasons we do historical tributes is so that we do, re, we encourage you to do research on people. And so in my doing my follow up research on Colin Kaepernick, I discovered this brother who is the subject of this morning's historical tribute. Um, in his lifetime, this brother uh, was exceptional. Uh, it was, it was an incredible athlete, artist, author, and songwriter. His name is Romare uh, Bearden. He was born in Charlotte, North Carolina in, uh, on September 2nd, 1911. Uh, and his family moved him to New York when he was just a toddler as part of the Great Migration. And we, we all, I'm sure, know what the Great Migration is. Now, often when I do historical tributes, I talk about people whose beginnings were poor or disadvantaged. You know, I often do ex-slaves or people who were direct descendant of enslaved people. But this brother was different. Um, he, he, he grew up in a household that soon became a meeting place for major figures of the Harlem Renaissance. His father, Howard, was a p pianist, and his mother, Bessie, uh, played an active role with the New York City Board of Education and was also involved in local politics and was a correspondent for the Chicago Defender, which was one of the largest African-American newspapers in the country. So he grew up in, in and around talented, artistic people. In 1929, he enrolled in Lincoln University, the nation's first historically Black college, um, and it was founded in 1854. He later transferred to Boston University. Now, when he was a kid, he, he played baseball, and, and he was actually a discus thrower for the track team. So when he got to Boston University, he started playing sports again. He became the starting fullback for their football team, and then he started playing baseball, and he pitched, and he became quite an exceptional pitcher. Um, in fact, he pitched for Boston University and he was awarded a certificate of merit for pitching for them. And he hung that in wherever he lived from then on out. He was proud of that certificate and he, he displayed it wherever he lived for the rest of his life. Now, while, at, while in Boston, he played um, in the Negro Leagues and for other, and, and other baseball, the semi-pro teams, and he played against white teams. He once pitched against Satchel Paige, the great Satchel Paige. Um, and he also one time played against the Philadelphia Athletics, okay? Now, those of us, some of us rem will remember that the Philadelphia Athletics became the Kansas City Athletics, who then became the Oakland Athletics or Oakland A's, who may one day be the Las Vegas A's, but that's a different story and we won't go into that. But he pitched against the A's and he was so impressive. He pitched a one hitter and he was so impressive that the owner of the A's at the time offered him a contract to play in the major leagues. Now, let me, let me say that again. In 1932, 15 years before this brother, Jackie Robinson became the first African-American to play uh, in the major leagues. This brother was offered a contract to play in the major leagues 15 years before. But there was one stipulation. This brother, um, would have to play as a white man. Now, back in the day, it, we, they used to call it passing. If you were black and you could live as a white person, they called it passing. And they wanted him to pass and be, be white, give up all his black roots and play baseball. And he was a proud black man and he refused. He said he didn't wanna hide his identity. He didn't wanna give up his family and he wouldn't play baseball despite the, the, the fame and the money that it would have given him. So he, so he and if his, if his career had ended there, 
I think he would still be worthy of historical tribute. But fortunately for us, his career didn't end there. So he, he, he continued. He transferred to NYU, New York University, where he studied art, education, science, and mathematics. And he graduated with a degree in science and education in 1935. And he went on to uh, pursue his true passion, which was art. He uh, studied art around the world. He went to the Sorbonne, which is a school in Paris, and he learned different forms of art. He, he, at one point, he did abstract art. At one point, he learned cubism from Pablo Picasso. And he just went around and did as much art as he could. And he, and he started getting into collage. Ultimately, he became uh, one of the finest artists America has ever produced. He... Uh, he painted in colors, and now with what time I have left, I want to show some of his works. Uh, he, these are his oil colors, and as you can see, he loved to paint uh, sisters. He loved to paint our sisters. Uh, these are more of his works. He painted scenes from the South, uh, and scenes of bl just black scenes. The, these are more of his uh, oil colors. As I said, he liked to paint sisters. He also worked a lot in what they call collage. And collage is when you take um, different kinds of mediums, uh, cloth, newspaper, or whatever, and you glue them onto a canvas and you create art that way. And he, he worked a lot with collages. This is one of his collages, or some of his collages, some of his collage work. He was also a songwriter. He wrote the song, the, the, the jazz classic Seabreeze, which was recorded by Dizzy Gillespie and Billy Eckstein, who was a, uh, a high school classmate of his. And so he liked to feature musicians in his art. And here you can see um, a collage and you can see the different jazz influences in his collage. Like I said, he liked to feature musicians. This is more of his work. In these pieces, in the upper left, you can see uh, Fats Waller and Dizzy Gillespie. In the upper right, there's Dizzy Gillespie and a brother that I think is Thelonious Monk. And in the bottom, you see his, his, he's honoring a lady day, uh, Billie Holiday. And in the lower right, I think that is uh, Louis Armstrong, but I can't be sure of that. I do wanna show three more pictures before I close. And these pictures were inspired by, I, I, I was inspired to put them in because of individuals, because of three individuals. And those three individuals happen to be here today. So that's fortunate for me. So the first uh, of these pictures, I used to go to this, uh, this small restaurant in Oakland and I would watch um, Maestro mm -hmm. Baba Damu mm -hmm. play with his band, right? Mm -hmm. And so this picture, Baba Damu, reminded me of you and your band playing in that restaurant. And so I include this Baba Damu mm -hmm. for you. Um, in this other picture, the second picture, uh, I used to, I've seen Brother Nantambu play his stand-up bass. And I think that this picture was inspired because I believe that, that Brother uh, Romare saw some tall, smooth brother like, like Nantambu playing the bass and it was inspired to, to, to paint this. And so Baba Nantambu, this picture was for you. It reminded me of you. Uh, now the last picture that I wanna show, it goes out to uh, one of our ministers in training who shall remain nameless. Um, but the, this brother is, uh, he, he fancies himself a bid whist player and I now give him his due. He, he's a pretty good player. But for some reason, he doesn't like to use jokers. And so I put this picture in to show this brother that ever since that, that way back in, in, you know, that, you know, back in the day, our people always use jokers when they play bid whist. So my brother, this picture is for you. You know who you are. So Romare Bearden died in New York City on March the 12th, 1988, due to complications from bone cancer. The New York Times described in his obituary described him as one of America's preeminent artists and the world and the nation's foremost colleges doing collages. So this morning's service is dedicated to, and I pour libation for, 
Brother Romer Bearden. May his name and his work and his memory live in the hearts and the minds of our people forever and ever. Thank you, Bosa. Ashe. Ashe. So much beautiful things that we did not know before. Yes. Hey, one of my Ashe. Ashe. And, and so, Baba Sydney, now you're going to have to start using the Joker because we know it's you. <laughs> Now you gotta start using the joker, Baba Sydney. <laughs> Thank you, Mommy and Dina. <laughs> hey, Todd. Somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody always gonna say the name. <laughs> next is next is a video from Mama Gloria. Another young person's life ended up too soon. But these reminders are for us to see how we must live each day in its entirety. We're often running from this place to that, forgetting to love and give thanks in the place where we're at. Hardly eat together Mom and dad working hard every day Trying to make it better But ooh, let your heart be free Take joy in who you be Tomorrow is not promised to you Live each waking day Give thanks in every way Children killing themselves too All for reasons they don't quite understand Why some would take all created By another man's hand Day to day can seem so hard to bear But all the joy when you open up your heart to share And let your heart be free Take joy in who you be. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Live each waking day. And give thanks, give thanks to thine own self. Oh, be true to thine own self. Be true. And let your heart your heart be free my joy your joy your joy is my joy your joy is my joy your joy is my joy your joy is 
my joy, your joy is my joy, your joy is my joy, your joy. Let your heart be free. Oh, take joy in who you be. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Let your heart be free. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Thank you, um, Baba Jeff, for putting that video up. And thank you, Sister Gloria, for putting in the video. That was absolutely beautiful. Let your heart be free. So awesome and so true. And thank you ever so much, Asante Sana, Baba Tai. Just teaching, teaching. There's a whole bunch of new stuff that's just been illuminated in our space. Um, so right now, I want everybody to take a moment. We're going to take a moment and make sure that we're all on mute. Just take this, just that one moment. Um, because right now we're going to be doing two things. First, we're going to be, um, Mama Michelle and Baba Damani are going to be coming with the litany of sacrifice. And then right after that is going to be the message from Minister Amadi. So, um, You'll be hearing from me right after the litany of sacrifice to um, to uh, enter in the minister, and I just want to make sure that we are all, you know, checking our devices so that when the minister is speaking, that we make sure that we are on mute. So, Mama Michelle and Baba Damani, litany of sacrifice. Oh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a time in our service we uh, pay our bills and. Uh, I call it practicing the Yajima. We get to collectively practice some Yajima. All right, I'm gonna read a uh, half of a scripture in the book of Patahotep on uh, number 12 on page 45. It says, share with your friends that which you have, for that which is yours is a gift of God. Those who fail to share with their friends are shunned for having a selfish soul. Although people might plan for tomorrow, they do not know what will come to pass. But it is the righteousness by which people are sustained. Okay. Um, all right, uh, brother. Um, you, uh, okay, let me read this first. Let me have sacrifice. Save us, O Holy One, by your name. Vindicate us by your might. Hear my prayer, divine protector. Listen to the words of my mouth. How can we repay the Holy One for the gifts that have been given to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the God of our ancestors. We will fill our vows to our creator in the presence of all our people. Gladly we bring our sacrifices to you. We will praise your name, O Amen Ra, for it is good. Emoja, unity. We shall strive to maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Kuji Chagalia, self-determination. We shall define, name, create, and speak for ourselves. Yajima, collective work and responsibility. We shall build and maintain our communities together. Our brothers and sisters' problems shall be ours to solve together. Ujamaa, cooperative economics. Together we shall build and maintain our own businesses and together profit from them. Nia, purpose. We shall make our collective vocation the building and developing of our community and the restoration of our people to our traditional greatness. Kumba, creativity. We shall do as much as we can in any way we can to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than when we inherited it. Imani, faith. We will believe with all our hearts in our God, our people. And in the righteousness and victory of our struggle. Ashe. Ashe. So up on the screen, you see the different ways in which you can uh, do our uh, 
donate her or send her sacrifices to both we'll say Oakland and we'll say Sacramento. Um, you can go to their websites to donate or uh, you can uh, send your checks by mail. And I'm still a fan of sending my check by mail. So don't worry, you're not the only one out there who might be doing that. But for and those... <laughs> So if you need to note this information down, please do so. And, uh, but I'm going to, I think, move on to a little prayer of sacrifice for all of us. Oh, Mother, Father, God, she who is of the most high, the maker of all that is and shall be, the giver of all our needs, the knower of what is beyond truth. Give strength to each and everyone listening, for we have come together to pledge our support through giving, through donating hands, through positive minds. Let the seven, or seven principles guide what we can give today, what we will give at the next time of sacrifice. Because with those dollars and coins that we offer, we give in the name of Amun-Ra. We give to support the way. We add to the path of light when we give that same path that we all must walk, some may run, some of us may crawl upon, others may need to be carried for a time. It is through our contributions that we hold back Babylon, fight for our way, and stand tall to say the Nkusa Saba, and strive to live it in every action and in every way. It can be a mighty sacrifice and giving to Wose each week for some of us. But with the help of the Most High, that spark of God that's in us, we can save and cushion the losses we will face because we have learned to sacrifice. And when there are times when we cannot give, there will be a brother or sister who will step forward. Let us share amongst ourselves so that no one is left behind. Ashe, amen, Ashe. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. Give thanks. Um, give thanks to um, Mama Michelle and Baba Damani for bringing us the litany of sacrifice. We thank you all. Um, and so now we're getting ready to hear from the from the minister. Um, the message. Um, to be proclaimed coming from the most high. We just give thanks um, for the furthering of this service. After you will hear from Minister Amadi, you will be hearing from the invitation from MIT Sydney. But first we would like to bring forward um, a minister who has come and just blessed us, blessed our community every time he speaks. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna be quiet because I'm just ready to hear what he got to say. So Minister Amadi, please come forward. Thank you, sister. Um, and thank you, Sister Michelle, for that wonderful prayer. It reminds me of a, um, of a principle of a law, the law of sacrifice. Something must be sacrificed for something else. And so we want something, and so we got to make some sacrifices for that which we desire. Is there, is the, screen share is it or is it um i'm looking here um maybe that's my oh i'm sorry i, I have it wrong okay i like to put the gallery on so i can look at everybody <laughs> when i'm speaking so um we'll have to poo uh we'll say family i'm always glad to be with my we'll say family and and and, and it's wonderful i appreciate the opportunity to share uh, I want to thank all of my guests that came to support me, including my wife, Veronica, who's on her computer. And also just want to take a minute to thank uh, Baba Tai for that historical tribute. Um, you know, it reminded me of, of that book, um, The Autobiography of an Ex-Colored Man. I don't know if you guys remember, I think James Weldon Johnson wrote that book. And so what, so this guy, he passed, he passed and then at the, he got to the end of his life and he said, you know, he said, you know what? It feels like I sold my birthright for what, what could be a pot of stew. 
And I, so I'm just so glad uh, that Romare Beard did not sell his birthright for a pot of stew. Ashe, Ashe, brother. Ashe, Ashe. So, um, so as we approach the end of this year, uh, well, you know, I, I got a lot of thoughts. You know, I've been trying to work on cutting down my messages because I've been throwing so many ideas, but I have so many ideas in my mind and in my heart. So I just, I just ask you to bear with me and, you know, I'm going to move steadily through this message here. But, you know, I, I, I tried to cut out as much as I could, but I just have a lot I want to share today. So bear with me, please. And so as we approach the end of the year, this is a good time to close out your affairs and let go of whatever is holding you back, whatever is weighing you down or not working. Then prepare to take advantage of the opportunities that surely lie ahead of you in the coming year. The winter solstice is coming on December 21st, and it carries the promise of the light of new opportunities on the horizon. The title of today's message is, Reconcile the past, plan for the future, live in the now. It brings to mind the African concept of Sankofa, which in the Twi language of Ghana means go back and get. It is represented by the image of a Sankofa bird. And so Bill, can you show that image? It's Bill there, okay, there, there, there it is, there, there, there's the image of the Sankofa bird that I'm sure you've all um, seen before. So the bird is, is looking backwards, representing the past, while holding an egg in its mouth, representing the future, and walking with his feet facing forward in the present. And so this is the Sankofa bird, and it reminded me, you know, as I was putting this message together, of an image that would fit with my message. Thank you, Bill. And as you see, I, I put a Sankofa bird, it was Bill's suggestion in my, as my background <laughs> to keep reminding you that we're talking about Sankofa. So we gotta reconcile the past. We must, we must put painful experiences behind us while learning the lessons so that we won't repeat the experience. Plan for the future. We must anticipate what may be coming so that we can avoid looming pitfalls and take advantage of coming opportunities. And most importantly, live in the now or the present moment. We must stay focused and pay attention to what's happening in the moment so that we can make the correct choices that will lead us to where we want to be. We must give the moment what it is asking for. I have found that if you stay focused, keep on walking, keep on breathing, and observe your experiences without judgment, things will change for the better. I was talking to a lady who gave me a good example of doing just that. She told me that she was in a guy's house who had invited her over for lunch. She considered him to be just a friend. She also knew that he had a girlfriend. He told her that although he had a girlfriend, he really wanted to be with her. He started telling her that he liked her and she should be his woman. She proceeded to tell him that it was not gonna happen because she wasn't interested in him. Then he got more aggressive and started trying to kiss her. She didn't like that approach, especially since he already had a girlfriend. She proceeded to, to uh, tell him to back off, and she gave him a few very sharp remarks. So, so as a result, he got angry at the harshness, harshness of her tone, and suddenly he grabbed her by both wrists so that she could not move. She realized that she did not have the strength to resist him, but because she was focused in the moment, she immediately changed her tone. She started talking nice to him and telling him what he wanted to hear. As she did that, he relaxed and automatically started to loose, loosen his grip on her wrist. Once he had loosened his grip enough, she broke away from him, ran out the door, 
got in her car and drove away. She maintained her presence of mind. After that, she didn't have anything else to do with it. She was focused enough to give the moment what it was asking for. It was, it was asking her to diffuse the confrontation, flow with the situation, and run away when she got the opportunity. When we tune into the moment and act accordingly, the rest will take care of itself. The best way to secure the future is to take care of the present moment. You can make the powerful choice to obey the spirit inside of you and not the circumstances that surround you. The circumstances may be telling you that something bad is gonna happen, but if you listen to your inner voice, it will probably tell you to be still and look for an avenue of deliverance because God, Amen Ra, is in charge. Ashe. Ashe. And so we're talking about Ashe. reconciling, we're talking about reconciling the past, planning for the future, and living in the now. Sankofa is often associated with the proverb, which translates as it is not wrong to go back for that which you have forgotten. As we close out this year of 2021, let us continue to reflect on the meaning of our individual experiences and collective history and the lessons to be learned so that we can move resolutely forward in the coming years into what promises to be a glorious future for African people. It feels to me like our reciprocity is coming. As we plan for the future, let us know that despite appearances to the contrary, the pendulum of good fortune is swinging in our direction as things are balancing out because justice is going to have the final say. It's balancing out according to spiritual law. Increasingly, more and more Africans in America are embracing their African cultural roots. I remember in April 2019, when Nipsey Hussle was tragically killed, his mother, Angelique, spoke about the Karaz Unity Center of African Spiritual Science at her son's funeral. As her, she called it her spiritual home. She told the people to live according to the solid values that they got from their home of origin and to tap into their African spirituality. Hundreds of people responded and started coming to Karaz Center and tuning into the service via internet to discover what that could look like. When she said that she wanted to encourage all Black people to go back to their roots and find your creator and your spiritual power, those words resonated with many Black people. Those resonated, and that same idea resonates with all of us who come to Ose to participate in the sacred African way. That's why all of us are here. At Wosei's anniversary celebration last year, Professor James Smalls challenged Wosei to get creative in your outreach to young people and get the message out to them about the richness of our African culture and the power of our ancient African values. He said that Black people want to do right by their heritage but many have not been exposed to an African-centered perspective. People would do better if they knew better. Our job is to get the message out because our people want to hear it, even if they must push back, push through some initial resistance. I often say that when the conditions are right for something to happen, it will happen almost effortlessly. The soil is fertile. Now is the time to plant the seeds to awaken our people. As more and more of us become conscious of our African selves, we will begin to see the excellence within ourselves. Call it forth 
and then turn it into an advantage that can be monetized and then used to finance the liberation movement. This is my formula for nation building starting at the individual level. Develop your Black excellence to gain Black advantage and create Black progress. The awakened African will bring balance and order back into the world. Just like we didn't see the civil rights movement coming or the Black power movement coming, or for that matter, the Black Lives Matter movement coming. There is an African-centered renaissance and liberation movement looming on the horizon that I predict will sweep us into revolutionary change. The emerging byword will sound something like this, Black excellence. Pay attention, and I bet you're going to start noticing that you hear that expression more and more. So now that you have a heads up, I want to encourage all of us to find the talents, skills, and knowledge within ourselves. Develop them leverage your black excellence into an advantage monetize it then expand your personal influence into institutional influence so that we can control the institutions within our communities and better advance the interests of african people so we have this excellence historically you know but but we don't have succession plans and a lot of times we we do so much but we don't we don't make sure that we don't convert our, our individual excellence into institutional excellence. So that's what I wanna encourage you to think like that, that you know, you could create an institution out of, out of your excellence. And that's what we need to be thinking about. In looking back to move forward, like the St. Kofa bird, we must reconcile and learn from our past. As we, rec as we remember the sacrifices and courageous acts of our free and enslaved ancestors. Let us remember that we have always been a deeply spiritual people. That's something we all know about Black people, we're deeply spiritual. It took a lot to deal with the awesome weight and pain of enslavement, but our ancestors had steadfastness of purpose. It was their spirituality that gave them the devotion and resolve to just continue on and move through that dark period in history. I heard about a, a study that was done in the 1960s under President Johnson to explore what it was that enabled our ancestors to survive the harshness of enslavement. They found that it was their spirituality. That's how, that was the secret of how they did it. That was the secret of how they dealt with the fate worse than death and continued to, and continued to live, their spirituality. I want to encourage us to remember that and nurture the power within our spiritual traditions that took many forms but has always been a reflection of our African heritage. I call us, you know, in, in this community, these African-centered communities, I call us conscious Africans. But I call the spirituality practiced by our enslaved ancestors and still practiced in the traditional Black Christian church, I call that unconscious African spirituality. It reflects the ways of our African ancestors call and response, holy dancing, rhythmic music, testimony, and shouting. Oh, that goes all back to Africa. So I want to share a passage from Marimba and Ani's book called Let the Circle Be Unbroken to illustrate the point. Uh, there is a handout that should be in the chat with, 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 which has even more, I tried to kind of cut it down, but a longer um, version of what I'm going to read, even though it's a lot to read. 
but I think it's worthwhile for you to hear. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read this long passage because it, it tells a really powerful story that I'm not sure that everybody knows, and I just felt like I had to share this with you. Okay, so this is from page 23. In North America, they left us with nothing. They took the material aspects of our culture and prohibited the continuance of our traditions. They took away our drums. In terms of the African worldview, they attempted to isolate us from our source of spirit. In order to survive as Africans spiritually, we had to create meaning. We had to create order in the midst of chaos. We were forced to create something different, some form within a modality compatible with the African worldview through which we could make contact with the source. We needed a form through which we could be energized. We needed to create a belief system to enable us to reestablish on foreign ground that driving energy for a continued vital existence that is the birthright of all descendants of Africa. We had to find ways of expressing, energizing, and revitalizing the spiritual being we had salvaged from the wreckage of the Holocaust. Unless this spirit was expressed, it could not be renewed. And if it were not renewed, the circle would not be complete and it would die. Let the circle be unbroken. Out of the chaos and trauma of slavery, the spirit of Africa was reborn in the form of the African-American ethos, which is the fundamental character or spirit of our culture. It is through ritual that new life was given to the African spirit. The modality of ritual drama was foreign to the Euro-American ethos and therefore could not have come from that source. We performed the ring shout in the hush harbors, the night sings and the prayer meetings. Away from white surveillance, we would come together. We gathered and enjoyed the warmth of our commonness, of our togetherness. We would form a circle each touching those next to us so as to physically express our spiritual closeness. We testify, speaking on the day's experiences. We shared the pain of those experiences and received from the group affirmation of our existence as suffering beings. As we lay down our burdens, we became lighter. As we testified and listened to others testify, we began to understand ourselves as communal beings, no longer individuals that the slave system tried to make us. We sang and we moved, slowly at first, then increasingly faster and faster to the sound of our voices was one voice and we no longer had bodies to restrain us. We sang and moved until we got happy. It is this spirit that has been, that has not been altered by the European. It needed to be seen and heard and felt every now and then in order to be kept alive. Through our participation in these rituals, we became one. We became again a community. Each of us gained the strength necessary to deal with our incarceration. Sometimes we, pre we prepare for rebellion. We made contact with a source of energy so powerful that it allowed us to withstand confrontation with the most destructive force in human history. We survived the disastrous implications of Western domination. For those of us in North America, the night sings and the prayer meetings were akin to the Vodun ceremonies in Haiti. They were the rituals in which we called the spirits and the spirits came. The spirits must be called in the appropriate manner or they won't appear. 
in more traditional African ritual, they are called by the drummers, the songs, and the dances. In African diasporic ritual drama, all the familiar air elements are present in a reinterpreted form. Ashe, Ashe. A beautiful story, beautiful history that she, that the sister Marimba Ani shared with us to help us to retrace uh, how we got where we are today. And these ancestors brought their African spirit with them into a new land. And that's the story of how they did it, according to Marimba Ani. And so religion and spirituality were a big factor in how our ancestors survived enslavement. Part of our reconciliation of the past 400 years is to acknowledge and appreciate the role in our survival that this form of African spirituality in the form of the black church has played. Some of the things we can learn from it are structure, discipline, ritual, and spiritual devotion. Our enslaved ancestors may not have identified it as my aunt, but they understood character, integrity, and order. The Black Christian Church has produced results. And I would like to see the conscious African spiritual community focus more on producing results. You know, you can't argue with results. You know, we gotta, we, you know, we're not gonna win a philosophical discussion until we can show what we can do with our African sense of self. And, you know, we have to show the world what we can do. Now, Ilioma Day is a good example of tangible results that Wose has produced that cannot be denied. So this is, so, you, so you're on the path, you, you, you know what you're doing, you know? And when we got, this is just something I wanted to just bring attention to so that we can really focus on, on not arguing with, with words, argue, and it's not even an argument, but just show the world what we can do. And that's what we're, we'll, we're gonna be doing. That's what we are doing. We must support our people in transcending the apparent limitations of their experience. That's what we must do. I see the work of an African-centered spiritual center as being to invoke spiritual solutions to the challenges we are facing and to frame religious and spiritual concepts within an African cultural context. For example, instead of pursuing salvation through grace and the sacrifice of someone outside of themselves, our ancient African ancestors sought to be vindicated. They sought not salvation, but vindication. They sought to be vindicated by their good works. We must model ethical and moral behavior, which is the hallmark of all African societies. Instead of literal, literal interpretation of scripture, our ancestors understood that African thought is symbolic thought. George G.M. James in his book, Stolen Legacy, tells us that the primary aim of the ancient Egyptian mystery schools was the deification of man. On page 27, it says, they taught that the soul of man, if liberated from its bodily fetters, could enable him to become Godlike. The primary spiritual, religious teaching of our African ancestors was that we are divine beings having a human experience and that we can transcend the limits of this human experience if we commune with the Creator. We can, we can become conscious co creators of our experience through the correct use of our thoughts words and actions. So this is a spiritual understanding that we must look to experience. As a people, we must focus more on proving spiritual law and less on following religious doctrine. And once we acknowledge the significant role that the black church has played in our history, 
and learn his lessons, we must find a way to hold onto our spiritual power as a people as we evolve our understanding to embrace a more natural way forward that affirms our wholeness and divinity and does not include the Eurocentric doctrines of original sin and eternal damnation. Our, teach, our, our ancestors didn't teach that. They taught that we weren't born in sin, we were born in wholeness. We we're, 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 we're come out of the creator and we partake in that divine nature. That's what our ancestors taught. We don't have to try to convert others, but rather to seek meaningful dialogue that involves critical thinking and indigenous spiritual understandings. We must find a way to move our liberation agenda forward across lines of religious differences. We gotta be able to talk with each other and allow everybody to believe what you wanna believe, but do you believe that we should be free? Do you believe that we should, we should, we should, we should have a stake in this economic pie? Do you believe that we should have sovereignty over our communities and over, over our finances? Okay, well, if you believe that, hey, we can work together, you know, whatever else you want to believe. That's what we got to do as, you know, we kind of stop letting religious differences hold us back from working with each other. So let's also reconcile, as we're reconciling some of this collective uh, history, let's reconcile our personal issues from the past going into the next year. It would be good to apologize to those who you have injured. Think, think I'm gonna reflect, that's what I decided to do. I said, I'm gonna reflect back, you know, do I owe anybody an apology? <laughs> you know, do I, you know, I, I think I'm gonna reflect back on that and just, you know, and if I do, I'm just gonna go ahead on and apologize, you know? And um, we need to forgive those who have injured you and express thanks to those who have been a blessing to your life. And so that's another thing I said, you know, who do I need to thank for this year? This is a good time to do all of those things. The reason that you forgive, apologize, and give thanks is mostly for your own benefit. Apologies and forgiveness allow you to lighten your heart and leave things in the past as you move forward. And when you show appreciation for your blessings, it opens the way for more to come. And so I've talked about a lot about reconciling the past. So before I wrap things up, I'm gonna talk a little about planning for the future and a little more about living in the now. If we want to prosper in all areas, we need to think differently about the things that we are doing. I invite you to live a self-examined life where you are questioning your actions and monitoring your progress toward the goals that you have set for yourself. I invite you to create space in your life for daily prayer and meditation, for spiritual reflection, and to read inspirational material so that you can see beyond your current situation. You got to create that space and, and with it will come vision. You know, you'll be able to see beyond the things that, that you seem to be fighting. with. We should all memorize the principles of Ma'at so that we can better internalize those answers. Those principles being truth, justice, righteousness, propriety, harmony, order, balance, and reciprocity. I added righteousness. <laughs> if someone put a gun to your head and said, recite them, you should be able to do it. You should, you, I'm just encouraging us, you, every person here, memorize the principles of my eye, at least. Because when you memorize them, what happens is you start thinking about them, like, you know, when you're doing things, you're like, well, is this the just thing to do? You know, right? Wait, well, wait a minute. That's, that's not truthful, you know? <laughs> so, so, but memorize them. <laughs> when you memorize them, it really helps you to internalize them. So that's, so I was wanting, I want to just want to encourage you to also set that as an intention for the coming year, along with developing your Black excellence. 
you know, set that for an intention. You know, I'm going to develop my inner gifts and talents. Because you know, can't nobody do it like we do it. We just got to take it and refine it. You got to refine it. It's good in there. It's gold. It's got to be refined. You know, some of it is ready to go like, just like it is, you know. <laughs> so as we plan for the future, let's also train our youth to think in terms of ownership and not just getting a job and of creating generational wealth that they can pass on to their children, but not just in money, but also in values and traditions. Let's think of planting seeds for our people that will blossom 100, 200, 300 years from now. As a people, we must think generationally. So take an eternal, also take an eternal perspective on your life. What will be important in 150 years from now? More than the specific details of your life, it will be the tone that you set with your life. What did you stand for? What and who did you involve yourself with? The work of our lives is like the building of a great cathedral. Sometimes it took nearly a hundred years to build those, those, those cathedrals. Those who started it never saw the finished product. We often don't see the impact of what we are doing. We won't ever see the full impact of what we're doing. Let's think in terms of the legacy that we're, we are creating with our lives and the example that we are setting for those who look up to us. Time is circular. Past, present, and future exist in the present moment. Reconcile the past through forgiveness, accountability, and gratitude. Plan for the future by anticipating the obstacles and opportunities that are in front of you. And live in the now. Give the moment what it is asking of you. Give the moment what it is asking for, and the rest will take care of itself. If you just keep on walking in the direction of your highest intentions, keep on breathing through uncomfortable and painful moments, and keep shining the light of your goodness wherever you go, you will eventually find yourself in a good place. As you move into the coming year, you can make the powerful choice to obey the spirit within you and not the circumstances that surround you. Listen to your inner voice and look for an avenue of deliverance and blessing because God is in charge and something wonderful is happening to you and to our people now. Ashe. 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 Beautiful. So the message has been laid down. Come on. Minister Marty, when he gets up, I mean, he talks with such authenticity. He's coming from the heart. You know, he has a, the papers in front of him, but you see, it's just flowing paper there just kind of seems to keep him in the lane, but he is just flowing and it just comes out. And if you believe like I believe in what he says, he's talking about that we are on fertile ground right now. Come on now. We mm -hmm. planting the seeds, laying them down, and we're waiting for this, this fruit to, to come to fruition. You know, we're waiting for those who have not joined. We're opening up the doors. To, to start to come forward, to start to grow, that you've been touched by something that has went on today, that you've been touched by some of the words that have been spoken, that Brother uh, 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 MIT Malik had laid out the, 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 the essence of libation, that it doesn't have to just only be those 
uh, icons of the past, but I your say, own family, I say. who we stand yeah. on, and and that we we do this here. And my my brother, uh, 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 a tie when he started talking about Ramir Burton, and and I loved it when he started talking about showing that this brother said that, and I think. Uh, 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 Minister Mari put it right that he did not sell his soul right. for a pot of stew. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dude, we don't just give up and just say, well, you know, I'm feeling it. I like what they say, but I'm going to go over here or I'm going to sit and watch television. I'm not going to join in. I'm not going to tap into that spirit. He said this is the conscious and or unconscious Africanism that's there for us all. Okay. And so now we open the door. We're asking you to step forward, raise your hand, be a part of this movement, be a part of this African consciousness. And if you don't, you don't need to know everything. Yes. You just need to come on. We need some workers. Come in and start rowing this boat. Start moving the ball. Start moving till we want to go. The Sankofa bird looking back to know that his feet are planted forward. And it is moving That's forward, it. planted in the present, and we are moving forward. So as we as we bring the, our service to a close, just asking, is there anyone out there, anyone who has heard something today that touched him, if they felt something today that is moving him in the direction of joining this movement, if you could raise your hand or put something in the chat or, Say something, move, kind of get these with a ring shot, just starts off quiet, starts off, you know, silent, and then and it starts to move you. Let's feel it. Let that spirit move you and just roll, throw your hand up, put something in the chat, and just say, I'm ready, I'm willing, I'm able to get into this we'll say movement. Do I have somebody? I'm looking, my eyes are open, my spirit is open, my heart is open. Come on now, do we have one? Is there one there? Ah, Shay. Ah, Shay. Moving, moving along. So, and, and it's never too late. If you don't feel like doing it now, you can throw it up a little bit, you know, later on. Brother Marty, Minister Marty, my brother, you always putting it down. Just make it plain, make it so simple. I, I, I love you. I love you. You really brought and it today. You brought you it always today. bring it, but yes. Perfect Today, timing. There you go. Perfect timing. Mm, mm, mm. That's Thanks. the so way to go. Yes, inspirational. Yes, yes. So before we move on, we have a special, uh, 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 a special little tribute, I believe, a little special part of it that our dear brother uh, uh, Alaman, uh -huh. who's in uh, D.C., one of uh, one of someone who's just a, 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 a part of the we'll say movement party, coming on every uh, week. He's been around, been here. Uh, he has a video that he wanted to share. And if Brother Bill, if you got it uh, uh, set up, if you could play uh, some of the video for us. Thank you, MIT Bill. Colin couldn't stand for the red, white, and blue because Colin's calling all to stand against what's invisible to some of you. That the land of the free and the home of the brave has been harboring some who have no desire to behave. In keeping with what the founders declared, self-evident that all are created equal, unless you're black, even a black person. It's been open season for shooting black and brown with bullets or with sound bites by those who stand their ground. Colin couldn't stand because he couldn't stand the sound of a nation united against terror from without but a nation divided when it comes to terror that no doubt comes from a place from deep within the heart of an America still stained by the sin of a nation built on bloodied red backs and soil shamefully toiled by shackled blacks who continue to be denied full justice due. So if we are to be true about the red, white, and blue, then we have to address what still happens to people of color who some still view as second class, less than, inherently inferior by some who think their skin color makes them superior when the measure of a man is actually found in the interior. And Colin has more heart, more courage and integrity than to stand by or even deny that some only pretend to be defenders of what is self-evident and true while knowing the red, white and blue still has soul searching to do. He's not anti-police, soldiers, or vets, but he's calling them all to make sure that they get 
real about how fear and prejudice hover when it comes to the treatment of some people of color. Collins' cause is not the disrespect of red, white, and blue. Collins calling out the disrespect of those of a darker hue. If you serve with integrity and that's not you, then stand up and challenge those who still do. Use the rules of fearing for life with unarmed blacks, but not murderous whites. And sadly, too many blacks can still attest that one call from a so-called damsel in distress ends in an arrest or an execution style death. Don't hate the truth and embrace the lies, for truth denied is truth crucified. But like Jesus Christ, Colin's truth will rise. And the truth Colin continues to live is sanctified by the one who forever is the embodiment of truth, justice, and the American way, which can be more than cliche if we kneel humble ourselves. Colin couldn't stand for the red, white, and blue, because Colin's calling all to stand against what seems invisible to some of you. Ah, Shay, ah, Shay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well done. Well done. I'm telling you, this has been a powerful, powerful service. And at this time, uh, can I call on my dear brother uh, uh, Adamu to come forth and, and lead us in? Uh, lift every voice, brother. Uh, can you, Adamu, are you there? Oh, good there morning. Go. Okay, good there afternoon. you go, my brother. Sorry about that. Not uh, a problem. You know, forgot to uh, unmute myself. Uh, <laughs> we do that. Uh, good seeing you, brother, and always uh, just a beautiful spirit uh, uh, all around. God bless everyone. Uh, and this is the uh, uh, National Anthem. <laughs> we stand shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart, spirit to spirit, standing on the shoulders of our ancestors who have come before us like the great Sankofa bird, looking backwards, standing in the present, moving forward. And I like this, as, as Brother uh, Amari had brought up the unconscious African spirit in the in the spirit of my grandfather's see, church, as the, when we came to a close, he would always start with something like, Ra, be with you. Ra, be with you. Ra, be with you until we meet. Uh, yeah. Knowing that we are one people, one people, one people. with one faith, one, one faith. faith, one heart, one, one heart, heart. One, love. 
love. One love. One love. One love. One love. One love. One love. All of the name that our ancestors have called for so many years. Let us all say, ah. Amen. 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 Amen.